Hello, welcome to this video on kinematics, where I'm going to be talking you through an example of how to apply the equations of kinematics for constant acceleration to um, problems in order to actually uh, be able to solve them. So in particular, what we're looking at is imagining that we're driving towards an intersection and we've got 24 meters to go when the light changes. We come to a stop exactly as we reach the intersection and it took us three seconds to do so. And what we would like to know, based on that information, is just how fast were we going initially. And we notice that we have one problem. We don't know what the acceleration is. We know it's constant, or we're going to assume it was, but we don't know its value. So in terms of things we know, we know that delta x is 24 meters. We know that delta t, which is really just t, because we're going to start from t equals zero, that'll be the instant that the light changes, is three seconds. And we know that v final is zero because we come to a rest, so that's meters per second. v zero is what we want to know. And we know only about acceleration partial information, which is that it's constant. So the fact that it's constant means we can grab all of our favorite equations from kinematics. So we can do things like that delta x is supposed to be v0 t plus 1 half a t squared. But we don't know a and we don't know v0. We do know t, so that's progress. But we've got two unknowns in that equation, so it's not going to help us solve for v0. So that looks like a dead end. What else do we know? Well, we know another delta x1 which says that it's vf squared minus v0 squared divided by 2a, which is cool. That turns into minus v0 squared on 2a. But uh-oh, that again involves the two unknowns, a and v0. So who knows what that thing is? Um, it's not at all clear, okay? Because we don't know a, we don't know v0. That's not going to help us. What else do we know? Well, we know by definition that Vf is V0 plus At. That's how acceleration works. It's giving you the time rate of change of velocity. So multiply that constant rate by the time. That tells you delta V. And that equation you may remember is actually coming from delta V is At. But delta V is Vf minus V0. So I can put it on the other side. I can write it this way. So that's cool, but it still involves v0 and at, because I know that vf is 0. So we've got this, but that doesn't seem to help. None of these seem to solve it by themselves, but that's OK, because all of these are supposed to be true. So we can pick any two and use them to solve for what um, we need, because if we have two unknowns and two equations, then everything's going to work out just fine. So let's go ahead and use this one. This tells me that, say, a is minus v0 on t. And I can take this one, this value of a now, and put it into either one of these other equations and solve for v0. So let's put it here. We've got delta x is equal to minus v0 squared on twice negative v0 on t. So I'm using this one. Combined. Okay. And I've just substituted this value right in for my a. So that is the minus signs cancel. One factor of v0 cancels. The t comes up to the top. And I've got a 2. So it's 1 half of v0 times t, which means that v0 is 2 delta x on t which is 2 times 24 divided by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8 times 2 is 16 meters per second. And I can check that those units are right. If I go back and think about all these, so that 2 is actually a 2. The 24 was 24 meters. The 3 was 3 seconds. So indeed, when I've plugged in, those are the units that I get out, and those are the units that I should have. Um, so 16 meters per second gives me my initial velocity. Okay, and that you can think about it a little bit. That's 
Um, I think that's close to the 60 kilometers per hour because I think that's 17 meters per second. So that is a reasonable answer. Now you might ask, I made the claim of that I could use this with any equation. So let's go through and just plug it into that one and make sure that that actually does work. So I'm going to replace the t's with 3's. t squared is therefore going to be 9. So that makes that part easy. So I'm going to have that delta x, which is 24. So I'm now plugging into this guy, is my v0 times 3, because t is 3. My 1 half a is negative v0 on t is 3, and 3 squared for my t squared coming from the actual equation that I'm plugging into. So this is another way of checking. We reasoned out that the velocity was pretty reliable, uh, pretty um, sort of normal sounding velocity. But we'll go ahead and check it by saying, does this other equation give us the same answer? Because if you can ever do anything two ways and get the same answer, then you're in a much better boat um, than if you only get it one way or if you get two different answers, of course. So let's keep going. Um, the 3 don't even have to square it because I'll cancel against that one. So I get that 24 is equal to 3v0 plus 3v0, sorry, minus, put the minus sign in there, minus 3v0 on 2. And I can make that 6 on 2, so that I have a common denominator. So 6 minus 3 leaves me with 3v0 on 2. So that tells me that v0 is 2 times 24 divided by 3, which sounds remarkably um, familiar because that's exactly what we did a moment ago. And that's the 16 meters per second. So at least now we're confident, hopefully, that we haven't made any mathematical mistakes in plugging into these formulas. We reasoned out that this is not too ridiculous a number for a car. Um, to be going with, so it's a seemingly good answer. Um, nothing obviously wrong about it, and in fact, it turns out this is right. Um, so that's just an application of those equations that sometimes you have to chain them together, but that's not a problem because they're all supposed to be true. You don't have to use just one. Hopefully that was helpful.